So, getting ready. Mm. I'm forgetting something. Oh yes, I'm forgetting you. <laughs> Let's get this in its place. Hello from La Liga Studios. La Liga Live today because of course we are doing a, um, how do you say in English, carousel. Uh, we basically are going to do a preview of the games for an hour and a half and then we do all the games at the same time, 5.30 p.m. British summer time and 6.30 Spanish time. And then we'll do a preview later on. Uh, sorry, no, the previews before the game. The post game and I will be uh, the, the, the show is presented by Sembra and with me we'll have yes Albert Ferrer. So what can we tell you about uh, what's about to happen? Remember the points we've got Atletico Madrid with 80 points. 80 though. Let's stop there for a second. Not a league in which the winner is going to take a lot of points but it has been that kind of league and interestingly enough uh, I think a lot of the media perhaps we all fallen into this trap tend to focus on the negative. Oh my God, Barcelona's crisis, Real Madrid dropping points, Atletico Madrid not good enough, Sevilla, they're doing well. But perhaps we should start thinking differently. Uh, now that uh, the uh, finances are going to have to be adjusted to adapt to the circumstances where the big signings won't take place, then it will be more about, wow, Atletico Madrid have managed to get some consistency. Real Madrid, haven't they brought some youngsters through and, uh, and of course, still... Uh, getting the veterans, giving them what they need, and uh, and Barcelona, mm, it was a transitional year, and perhaps helped them to uh, oh, put a positive spin on what's been going on. Anyway, 80 points, 78 for Real Madrid, 76 for Barcelona, and 74 for Sevilla, that even though, uh, if they won the two games, and uh, Atletico Madrid lost both, they will, they will not win the league, because they lose the head-to-head. -head. That's the next thing you have to look at, the head-to-head -head be between teams. So, uh, Atletico Madrid, see the games we've got, uh, Levante Cadiz, Celta, Elche, because there are everything to be decided for, that's why they're all playing at the same time. And there are um, five, five, four, I would say, really, teams uh, trying to avoid relegation. That's, uh, that's Huesca with 33, Valladolid 31, Elche 30 and Eibar 30. Because I feel that Getafe with 34 is safe. 34 points is what takes you to safety, I think. I've been saying that for a while, but let's see if I was right or not. Um, so yes, uh, Eibar will play Barcelona, Granada, Getafe, Huesca, Valencia, Osasuna, Real Sociedad. Real Sociedad also playing with Villarreal and with uh, Betis for the two places of the Europa League and one for the conference. And it's a little bit complicated because if Villarreal wins the Europa League, then there are different scenarios depending where they finish. So Villarreal really could actually be in the Champions League next season if they win the, uh, the uh, Europa League or uh, in the Europa League or in the Conference League or out of Europe altogether. So, week 37 and we've got Alaves Granada, Athletic Club Real Madrid, that's right. By the way, um, it's, it is clear now that Zidane is leaving. And uh, the club has to decide between Raúl, who has got an offer from HR Frankfurt as well, if he wants to start that way, he could. Uh, he's fighting with Castilla for uh, the playoffs in the playoffs of uh, of, uh, of second division, and they lost. lost Castilla. Castilla lost, so they knocked out of the semi-finals, no? Castilla lost. And Barça B lost. Castilla and Bar uh, Barcelona B. with Garcia Pimienta, uh, many people's not favorite, but choice to be replacing Kuman, uh, But anyway, back to Real Madrid. Yes, Zidane is actually uh, out, he will leave. And then it's either Raul or Allegri, Maximo Allegri, uh, Maximiliano Allegri, uh, who um, brings, uh, by the way, somebody that has been in the show list for Real Madrid in the past, uh, brings stability. Uh, I think he he's related to the kind of football, the brand of football that Juventus played in the past, which was not exciting enough for Juventus, hence them parting ways. Uh, but I think he's more than that as a coach anyway. When he talks, he adapts to what is in the club he's in and with the players he's got. It'd be interesting to see Allegri or Raul in that, uh, again, uh, transition that Real have to do or that mix that you saw, for instance, against Granada. You saw a team that had youngsters in, uh, in Marvin and Miguel Gutierrez. You saw... Um, 
players that have come through the ranks, or at least that have won the, the right to be in the first team, like Valverde. Others that were not counted on, but have become important, like Nacho and Militao. And of course, the veterans like, uh, like Courtois and Modric and Casemiro, Benzema, etc. That is the mixture. That's what's going to happen to Real Madrid next season, but it will not be with Zidane. Atletico will play Osasuna. Remember that Atletico have uh, actually uh, only lost four games since they moved to the Wanda Metropolitano. Just four games, only once this season. And uh, if I'm not mistaken, that was against Levante. And uh, and they are very strong against the Osasuna side are playing for nothing but they uh, already spoiled uh, a party when uh, I think Atletico Madrid were celebrating their centenary that day and Osasuna ended up winning that game and uh, spoiling the celebrations. Barcelona play Celta. Celta that have got, uh, is it four consecutive wins uh, in a row, uh, finally playing the way that the Caudet and the fans and the board wanted them to play attractive football. Uh, and also with the uh, players uh, coming from the ranks with um, with uh, that 4-1-4-1 formation with uh, Denis Suarez in the middle. Tapia is not playing, so it'll be Fran Beltran. 4-1-3-2, sorry. 4-1-3-2, uh, because up front uh, it's Iago Aspas and Santimina. Is that right? Uh, so, attractive football. They are um, with very slight possibilities of actually uh, making it into Europe. But they, they have uh, put themselves in a very good f uh, foundation to actually attack the European places next season. They are much more confident. They defend much better. Cadiz Elche. Uh, what a season Cadiz has had. If, do we choose uh, manager of the, of the year already? Let's think. Imanol Alguacil, because he won the cup. Or Alvaro Cervera, because he uh, kept Cadiz in the, in, in the first division? <laughs> I vote for Alguacil over there. I don't know. I'm, 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 I'm going to have to think about that one. Getafe Levante. Getafe was sixth. Sixth last season. And now they've got 34 points with a possibility of uh, going down. I think 34 will be enough, but we will see. Levante also saved uh, a long time ago. Uh, they keep losing games, but the draw against Barcelona and spoiled their run to, uh, for the title. I think Barcelona are out of it, not mathematically. Betis Huesca, Pellegrini, what a job he's done with, uh, with Betis. Again, a team that for the last, the previous five seasons, they were the worst defensive side in La Liga, amazingly enough. And now they are much more balanced. And as I said earlier, with possibilities of Europe, Real Sociedad Valladolid, Valencia Eibar. Let's see who gets the Valencia job. I think Diego Martinez is going to be presented with an attractive proposition to stay at Granada. But he will also have an offer from Valencia. So we will see. Valencia Eibar. We don't want Eibar. Nobody wants Eibar to go down with Mendy Libar, But uh, he needs one victory and one draw in the next two games, I feel, for them to stay up. Let's see if they get it here and be a Real Sevilla. Sevilla with Lopetegui. I've seen the, the uh, people asking him to take over Spurs. I think not only he's renewed with Sevilla for two years, he wants to stay on. He feels, um, he feels looked after. And in a club that will grow, there is room for, my, uh, for improvement for a team that actually is trying to beat, uh, Lopetegui is trying to beat Unai Emery's record points in the, uh, at Sevilla. I think he needs two more to actually go ahead that and become the, uh, the best finish uh, of Sevilla in history. All that in La Liga TV with uh, Albert Ferrer and Semra Junta. Uh, we cannot turn the... Uh, it's, it's getting ready, Albert, so we cannot turn the camera around. But he says hello and goodbye to all of you. Boys and girls, you have a good time. And uh, there he is. Now I look better. Yeah. Hi, guys. <laughs> hello. Girls. I hope you, you enjoyed the match day. It's going to be fantastic. Don't lose it. Don't miss it. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye-bye.